in pocket water like this where you've got lots and lots of rocks and lots of good places for, for trout to live, you really have to narrow it down and, and fish the best places because if you tried to fish every rock, you'd go nuts. There's just too many rocks. So you look for, you look for the best intersection of currents that you can find. Now we've got a really nice situation right here where we've got a rock and then we've got the plume below the rock. This is pretty dead swirly water in here and fairly slow water. And then down to the base of this jumble of rocks. So what you've got here is you've got a cushion that builds up in front of these rocks so that the water slows there because of the friction. Then you've got the water that washes down both sides of this rock. And you notice, if you watch the foam that goes down there, you'll see that the foam lines, which is where the food is also going to be carried, goes along either side of the rock. There isn't much foam behind the rock where, where a lot of people might think there'd be a trout. So there isn't much food here. The other, the other nasty thing for a trout behind a rock like this is that the water is swirling. It's unpredictable. The water, you look at it, the water is going in all kinds of directions and, and trout can't predict where that food is going to drift down. They get knocked around and they just, they go for a mayfly and then it gets thrown, thrown another direction. They didn't expect it to go. So they like things predictable. But if you look down the sides, you can see that it's a nice predictable progression and where these two plumes that go down either side, either side of the rock join, I like to call the focal point, which is where all the food below the rock comes together. And in this instance, not only do you have a nice focal point here, but you also have a jumble of rocks, so there's a little protection there, both from the current and a little bit of slowing of the current. So my my vote for where to find a trout in this whole area wouldn't be behind the rock, probably wouldn't be along the sides because there isn't much break from the current, but would be right in this area where all the current comes together. And you can see the foam going down through there, which is also where the food's going to be carried. Start with the near current tongue. Nice short cast and pocket water. You don't want to make a long cast because you end up getting dragged so quickly. Very tough to see your fly. You have to concentrate. Use a big enough fly or one with white wings so that you can pick it out. Surprised that there wasn't a fish in there, okay. but nice little brown trout. This fish was right in front of those two rocks, right in the cushion uh, in front of them, where we might expect him to be. And all I had to do was make a short cast and pop it over that rock and use the rock to uh, help me avoid drag. And there he was. And we'll just release him here in this nice, quiet water. And away he goes. Get right in tight to these rocks here. Hoping that somebody's sitting in front of the rock. Oh, <laughs> that one jumped right out of the water to take it. Good idea to hold these fish upside down if you do have to pick them up. Uh, best way to release them if they aren't hooked badly is just to uh, reach down and twist the fly and let them go. But in this pocket water, I don't want to just let a fish flip away because it's moving so fast. So I turn them upside down, they typically stop struggling, take the fly out easily, and then just let them go gently. 
Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.